Vahid asked me a question, and it's a good it's a good question. I never saw you mentioning parallel dips as a push exercise choice for easy strength. Good reasons. On the face of it, it's a good compound body weight movement that can be done weighted. Is there a reason you have not mentioned it in your examples? Well, it's funny you say that because in the new book, the new book, Easy Strength Omni book, I actually mention it in depth and discuss it. Let's go with my why I, do, I don't just leap into dips for all 8 billion on the planet, okay? First, uh, many of the athletes I worked with, very often teenagers, dips hurt their sternum. It just makes them ache. Um, I, asked the, I asked somebody about that, and they say that, let's see if I get this right, the, one of the fastest growing bones in your body is the jaw, and one of the slowest to fuse is the sternum. So you, it's like your body waits until all the puberty growth is over and then ratchets this area down. So when teens do dips, a lot of teens will complain about pain here. So I've always used dips with my uh, adolescent, teenage athletes, collegiate athletes, as a, if, if you're okay with it, do it exercise. Now, now we shift the other problem. 90% of North American males have a bad shoulder because of our throwing games. Doing dips on a, on a, on a beat up shoulder is, is hard on the joint. So it's like one of those things here in the United States anyway. Uh, <laughs> it hurts you when you're young and it hurts you when you're old. Having said that, I think there's magic in hypertrophy with the dip, the handstand push up, and the back squat. Um, my good friend Brian Gwaltney and I, he really discussed this in depth with me. And I thought one of the best mass building exercises he ever did was handstand push-ups. And, and of course, the second I heard him say that, I thought, well, that's that's interesting. And then other people, uh, it's the great tradition. John McCallum would have been a, a, a big uh, a keys to progress. He, would, he discussed this a lot. You know, dips back in the day were a standard mass builder. Hmm. Back squats, especially, uh, um, you know, high rep back squats are a definite mass builder. Um, you probably could put together a pretty good hypertrophy program. You know, I, I think in the book I call it Mass Made Even Simpler. Uh, you do dips, you do dips, high rep back squats, eat, eat lots, sleep lots, and only train twice a week. But you, on those two days you're lifting, you're, you really go for it. Lots and lots and lots of high rep squats. Yeah, so that's that's it's it's simple, folks. It's not easy. Here's what I think about the dip, the handstand push up, and the back squat as being really good for hypertrophy. It goes back to homunculus man, that weird little drawing you see in anatomy books that show you how much the nervous system ties into certain parts of the body. You know, and you'll always notice homunculus man's hands are huge because of so we are so tightly wired to our hands. You know, as a as a human person. I don't even think we're aware. It's funny, I, I think our eyes and our hands really are the keys to so many things. And I mean, there's the, there's, I'm, not the, I'm not the first guy to think of this, <clears throat> especially with making tools and utilizing tools, it's hands and eyes. So with those three exercises I told you, it would seem to be good for mass building hypertrophy, uh, body increases in lean body mass, is you don't really have a grip. Yeah, I mean, you're holding on to the ground like this, but you're not squeezing it. Uh, yeah, you're holding on to the bar for the dip, but you're really, I mean, I just wedge, wedge my hand in there and I can have my fingers relaxed. And the reason I know that is because I did something the other day. And I and I can do my dips with my fingers like this. And of course, with the high rep back squat, you really don't need a death grip on it. In fact, when I was really going with high reps, I learned quickly to have my fingers I would try to relax as much as I could in my upper body while holding on to that anaconda strength to deal with that weight in the back. So the answer would be, I, I, I have a lot of respect for dips. I think dips are good, but then I have to have the asterisk here. Asterisk, read the bottom of the page. It hurts a lot of teenagers. It hurts a lot of North Americans. So if I program that very often, one of the first if it's like if it's I'm doing something like online with the person emails, I'll get that'll kick, kick back within an hour. I'll have to come up with something else instead of parallel dips because of the the number of injuries with North Americans. 
So it's a great exercise, has the asterisk, and I think it's great for, uh, for mass building. Now for strength, uh, I think you do need to add load, and uh, my, best, my best dip, I think I did, I did 35 in a row, that's my personal record for dips. Yeah, that's way outside the lines of easy strength. So I would have to do dips with load and kind of depends. If, for those of you who've ever done dips with load, you know that you have to kind of figure out a, a system to work with that. Um, I saw at one of the gyms I was at, they have now a machine that you can do dips with load. I thought, that's okay. I, I, I get it. I guess you use them if you're, if you're not strong enough to do it with your body weight. Okay, whatever. But I thought that was kind of interesting. But you know, we've, we've got vests. I've tried them with vests. They don't always work well. You know, you dangle the weight, you know, you take the weight belt, you put, you put a loop around it with a chain or a, a rope, and then you tie the kettlebell or the dumbbell to it or the weight plate. And that, that all works. That's all fine. It's just, it's just, it's just maybe something some people just don't want to do. So I like them. Okay. Good question. And, um, if you do a lot of them, you'll get skinny. You'll, and then you can skinny dip. 